I think it's it's auto exposure. Oh, okay. So because the sun is directly in the camera. Hey, this is an interview with Gavin Michael Booth. He is a filmmaker and music video director from Windsor, Ontario and Amherstburg. In this interview, we get into learning by failing, the growth of his career, and the hard-won lessons that only come from experience. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell me about sneaking into concerts in Detroit. <laughs> the best concerts. Before they had the casino and they brought big bands mm -hmm. here to see all the major acts you had to go to Detroit. It really started as a way just to see concerts for free. Yeah, yeah and try to meet the bands that I wanted to meet. I thought, well, if I just laminated my own like mm -hmm. Canadian media pass, and that's how I met the band Third Eye Blind that mm -hmm. I've been working with for mm -hmm. 15 years. So I'd bring a tripod and the camera, and then, hey, I'm here to interview the band for the Canadian media company. And then, yeah, that got me shooting tour videos for bands and, and music videos, and, yeah. and kind of like opened up the door. But also taught me like a very valuable lesson of like, don't wait for permission. As long as yeah, you're not yeah. really breaking the law. Yeah. Like, I don't recommend anybody breaks the law right, or right. does anything illegal to get in. But if you can, like, fudge the rules a little bit to get yourself in front of the people that could, like, ultimately change your life, yeah. then go for it. Saying no to people. It's the easiest to do an email. Call is harder. Oh, yeah. But when you're in person and there's someone there, it's mm -hmm. so uncomfortable to turn someone down that they're kind of like, uh, you're here. I met, I met my wife at, a, at the Toronto Film Festival. Same okay. thing, like, snuck into a party. And it's always, like, the 19-year-old film college like intern at the door that's checking the list yeah yeah and you show up say like uh gavin booth i'm not on the list <sighs> <laughs> i mean well jim invited me you, you know jim from universal you know there's uh like well how about i just go inside i'll find jim he can come out here and, and yeah, validate yeah. it and they're like you have to and just like yeah, it's okay just go because yeah, 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 they don't yeah, know if you're important or not yeah, you know, they don't so want to offend, offend anybody yeah, yeah, yeah. So. we used to rent a video camera from the video shop in Amherstburg they would like yeah. rent it out for family yeah. vacations and things and almost every weekend we would like split our paper route money and rent the camera yeah, yeah. We, we a lot of what we did was like a fake like weekend update style thing where okay. we set up a news desk when, when I was a kid like the the Berlin Wall fell that was big breaking news so we do like we actually uh, have a piece of the the wall here in studio. Uh, Jim, could you uh, toss that over and just like you know, it would be a foam brick, but it would come flying in like yeah. knock out the reporter. Yeah. And that was all editing in camera, where you just like you would oh, stop, man. yeah, 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 and then set up the next thing, record. So that that's a a real challenge for filmmakers to not just do twenty five takes in a row, like they yeah. can actually edit in camera. Yeah, yeah. Because there was, you know, that's before we learned, like, well, you can connect one VCR to another yeah. and yeah. tape from one to another. Was there a moment? A moment when you really thought I could make a career out of this. When I was in high school, we used to also like that sort of video yearbook thing. I was like, mm -hmm. well, I should sell copies for thirty and what, or fifty and what was bucks that? a piece. The video yearbook, just just like the highlight of the year. You okay. know, the, just I would run around the school for the year, like from the from but, September through the through yeah, spring, and a yeah. And a lot of people were filming like the sports teams would Got have it. their games on tape, and they'd sell it for fifty bucks a copy. I was like, oh, I could make a business of this. Originally, I wanted to go to film school. Ended up not doing that at all and started my business right after high school. I was doing wedding videos mm -hmm. and movies like Clerks were coming out with the Kevin Smith had done and Slackers that mm -hmm. Richard Linklater made first and El Mariachi from mm -hmm. Robert Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. And that, that was the real revolution. Wait, you can just sell your it, comic yeah. book collection in your car yeah, and yeah. raise $25,000 and all you gotta do is make a movie and go to Sundance and then you're yeah, famous, yeah, you know? Yeah, so yeah. we all had that, that mindset and I just thought, you know, I'll 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 learn by failing. That yeah, will be yeah. my my approach. So I I made three feature films and some shorts, which most of the world has never seen. Mm -hmm. um, and although I feel like the scripts were still good for what I what I could write as like a twenty one year old with with no experience, we didn't have the tools or the acting caliber or anything like mm -hmm. that to to execute them properly. But the lessons learned in those failure, I still feel are a greater education than had I gone got to it. film school. Got it. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> and there's something particular about the film Leaving Town that was yeah, that, a lot. I like like an idiot. I just said, I, I know some people make short films. I'm just I'm going to make my first film. Okay. And I I didn't know anything about this. Is where film school would have helped. I didn't know about preparing shot lists. I didn't know about how to like budget a day we said okay we're gonna shoot these two scenes on this day and not thinking oh well this scene's gonna take 15 hours on its own to do yeah. let alone the other eight hour scene we want to <laughs> film and working with actors and 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 dealing with like uh you know flaring egos and problems on set because i had to learn how to 
um, self-promote, how to fight, you know, if we needed a scene with a hundred extras, I had to learn how to work with the community and, mm -hmm. and rally people to, to make them excited to be part of what we were trying to do. It definitely stands as my weakest production in terms of just everything, everything else. But I feel like a lot of filmmakers, you just have to get over that hump. You've got yeah. to get it out of your system yeah. almost, yeah. right? Like you, you don't, you don't know if you really want to do it until you've completed your first sort of indie film yeah, yeah, and yeah. gone through all of the trouble and the hassle and the 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 heartbreak and and the loss of money and everything else that, that you can yeah. possibly deal with on an indie film and then still say somewhere in you I want to do that all over yeah, again and yeah. try to do try to do it better. Someone was saying, uh, you know, I'm not where I want to be in my career and I feel like yeah. I should be further ahead by now and, and the, the kind of the mentor guy said, "Well, show me all your failures." And they didn't have any. And the point is, you can't get to where you if want. If you're not, if you're yeah. too afraid for it, it all has to be perfect before you start. It's never gonna happen. I, I had a project that was about a, a school shooting, and uh -huh. like like in a high school, and you know, at one point it was being like circled at 20th Century Fox, and um, you know, I had a producer of the Wedding Crashers and all these things coming yeah. on board to make the movie. But every time there was a real life shooting, it would it would fall apart again. Mel Gibson's company, Icon, that made mm -hmm. Braveheart and Hacksaw Ridge and stuff, were gonna make the movie and. And the Canadian government was involved. And we were up to almost a million dollar budget. And everything was great. We had this wonderful executive producer uh, out of Vancouver. And, and it, but I, I, all of my eggs were in one basket. And every time the film got delayed or stopped, mm -hmm. I spent like four years not doing much, except mm -hmm. maybe a couple music videos, because it was always like, this is it. This mm -hmm. is the next step. Mm -hmm. This is the big. This is the big Hollywood mm -hmm. movie. This mm -hmm. is going to be my breakout. Every time a real life tragedy happened, the the movie would get delayed or canceled, or somebody would pull their money out. And I, it was a very uh. harsh lesson in in learning. No, you got to have like a lot of projects on the go, yeah. and yeah. no matter where you are in your career, don't don't think this is it. I, yes. you know, I can rest comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. Everything's gonna just come to me. My advice too is that not a lot of people don't want to hear it. Is like not to worry about the money. Okay. You know, I do, I constantly do stuff for free or, yep. or like I'm rallying other people like, Hey, we, you're, you two are actors. You're a sound guy. I'm a director. I can do camera. I'm not the best cinematographer, but I can do camera. Right. Let's go shoot something. So the last couple of years I've been trying to just do every little music video, cool. every short film, every, anything that I can think right. of. You're building towards your 10,000 hours. You yeah. know, the theory of it takes 10,000 yeah. hours to master anything. You're networking, you're finding yeah. people you want to work yeah. with. In worst case scenario if you're proud of what you made, it's another showpiece. So your right. your demo reel or right. your your website or whatever you're trying to like use to attract people right. that you want to ultimately give you money right. to to do projects. It 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 only helps. It can't hurt. It's great for actors to be able to create their own work or write projects that they can star in. But yes. they've got to become gifted at the writing part of it. If you become actor, producer, writer, yes, editor. Um, and you're going to film festivals to promote this little short film you made, like it, you have to at least constantly check in with yourself and say, am I stealing away the time and energy I could be spent in acting classes or got like it, pursuing getting an agent? So if you don't truly love the producing and the writing yeah. side of it, don't do it. Yes. There are people out there yeah. that yeah, that can do it do. And, yeah. and collaborate with. Yeah. There's always a new myth, right? It was, I need new headshots. And I was like, I gotta have a website. And then it's, I, I gotta get 10,000 followers on Instagram or, or mm -hmm. whatever the latest rumor is. And then it's become the... I've, I've got to act and produce. I have to be a multi-hyphenate or I'll never mm. survive in this industry. And like, there's a degree of truth to that. But at the same time, if, if your burning passion is acting and not the rest of it, right. it's gonna then, show. then don't do right. it. Some of the music videos that I've done in my early days, I'm not particularly proud of them, yeah. but it's, that's mostly because I feel like I failed because I said yes, because it was a paycheck. Okay. But I was, my heart wasn't in it where I probably should have said no. Cause I feel like it was in part a disservice to the artist. Got it. Got it. In part in disservice to my own career, yeah. where it was just a job and it wasn't it wasn't passion. I don't want to be just a for hire director. Like money, right. I need money. I got to pay my rent. I got to yeah. pay bills yeah. like everybody else on the planet. You know, I want to provide better better life for for my wife and I. But at the yeah. same time, I'm the I'm the worst because I'm not driven by money at yes. all. If a friend calls me and says I I need somebody to hold. Uh, a boom mic on on my set, and I and I believe in that yes. that director. I'm I'm there. Everything's all about checks and balances. Yeah. Just always making sure that you're not giving too much of yourself away for free, or or making sure that the favor projects and things that you do are for people that you truly believe in. Yeah. Just learning to say no to some stuff. The most things that people end up hating in life are are usually of their own accord and their yeah. own, their yeah. own yeah. fault of getting Somewhere involved. Somewhere you said in them. yes, yeah. and you should have said no. Yeah, yeah. You heard one for the real, one for the meal. Ah. 
That's good. I, I probably do more like ten for the real, or or, oh. or or one one for the real, nine for the nobody will ever possibly <laughs> fund this weird little yeah, thing yeah. that I want to make, and then you know one one, one for the meal. Oh, and one for the oh shit rents dude. Yeah, yeah. Know? Got it, got it. <laughs> How do you think about location and when? Did you start asking yourself those questions and why have you made those moving decisions? I mean, I was I was scared to move. It yeah. meant like part of what's always been great to me about Windsor and like making the majority of my art here is the the cost of living. Yeah. It's so it's so yeah. affordable. I don't care if my car is a piece of crap. Yeah. I, you know, I'm <laughs> fine with a, a decent little apartment and and I've had some amazing you know, roommates and that, that owned homes that, that always like sort of really believed in me too, and particularly my friend Brian and my friend Bronwyn that were, were awesome and said, you know, charge me less rent than they have to if they were just taking any other roommate. I don't even know if they realize there's massive contributors to like my overall career that they know. I should probably call them and let yeah. them know that. It was partly out of fear because if I went to Toronto, then I'd, I'd I'd have to get another job or three jobs or whatever mm. while I was still trying to find a way to get paid through my art. Yeah. Cheaper rent means I don't need that part-time job and then I have mm. more time to write, more mm -hmm. time to be creative, mm -hmm. more time to just make experimental films. Sometimes you work full-time jobs for weeks on and you go, oh, I'm so exhausted, I don't want to go do the thing that I want to do. Yeah. When I got married to Sarah, mm -hmm. you know, she was between Toronto and Montreal yes. and I was in Windsor and, and so like Toronto just made the logical point. I definitely owe a lot to her for like kind of kicking my ass and even just the fact that she's in my life like a lot of the big decisions were were made out of out of that union you know and out of out of that marriage and she's always been my best confident and saying no this is what we should do and let's go do it and I was also staying here because of that the school shooting movie mm -hmm. which ended up falling apart finally kind of at the end of 2012 and that's when I said I I'm gonna put it on the shelf I don't want to do it anymore I moved to Toronto it was four or five months later that I had the deal to make the scare house. So that was May, August of that year. We shot the movie and everything's just kind of been mm -hmm. a bit of a whirlwind mm -hmm. since. And then with the scare house being released in the U S Sarah and I, we took a road trip down there. Mm -hmm. We were going to stay for a couple months. We rented like an Airbnb and, Oh, let's just try to meet some managers and agents. And, mm -hmm. uh, she really fell in love with it. And then I had just not really considered it yet. You know, I looked into what it would take to get a visa or a green card mm -hmm. and realized, Oh, I'm, I'm kind of overqualified mm -hmm. by their their specifications. We kind of never came home from that vacation. Mm -hmm. Got it. You know? Got it. <laughs> How have you found that's changed affected your career moving? Each each city feel it feels defeatist at first because you don't know anybody mm -hmm. and it's 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 brand new and you've got to start over. You get to different summits right yes. before you. Yes. So you know that's that's phase one and okay. then you rest and then yep. you go. So I feel like each city move is kind of like hitting a summit, like the Got peak's it. still way up yes. there. I don't know that experience because I hadn't moved cities until I went to Toronto. Yeah. Every time I meet somebody that I feel really like akin to their beliefs and their sort of success level, it's always like an affirmation of like, okay, I'm, I'm doing the right thing. Yeah, I moved yeah. here for the right reason. Because yep. a lot of people are like looking at the now saying, I, I'm not booked on an acting gig right now. I, I don't I don't have a film lined up yet. But you have to always be able to look back and be like, okay, well, in the last year I've done... Yes. X, Y, Z, and, and you know, and you can say, okay, that's actually pretty good by like Got it. this creative standard, this this job, you know. Yeah. Who has influenced you the most, or just someone who comes to mind? It's it, oh, it's easy. It's uh, it's my high school film and video teacher. Yeah. His his name was Keith Herrick. He passed away. I didn't know it at the time how influential he was. You know, he would do things like send my little short films I was making in high school off to whatever film and video festivals he could find. Mm -hmm. So he was submitting me to film festivals that I didn't even know because I was too shy to do right, it. Right, right, right. I can only speak of this because he's passed, but he gave me like a key to the school and the alarm code so that I could go in like on weekends <laughs> and evenings and use the gear and use the school as like my playground to go film all these little movies. He would argue with my parents on Parent Teacher Night, like, Gavin yeah, should be making films. Because like, at one point I wanted to go into medicine. That was... That oh, was, yeah, we didn't even get to on that. That was like my original plan. How close were you to going to med school? Oh, <laughs> well, in high school, I started uh, spending all my time in the video lab, so right. the, the grades weren't uh, weren't as great anymore because I was it. dedicating all my time. Something I wanted to do since I was a kid, I just, I liked medical. Part of it is I can't stand the sight of blood. Okay. As I became a teenager, like, I, I was never able to donate blood in high school because I, I passed out watching a girlfriend at the time give blood. Mm -hmm. um, it's weird for a guy who makes horror movies. I can't, I can't go, like 
get blood <laughs> taken at a blood clinic without breaking. I can't talk about it for too long. I'll break okay. into a cold sweat. If I'm not into something, I can't. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I would never be able to sit there and yeah. read textbooks yeah. and yeah. learn in a traditional setting and study for exams and all of that. I can work 16 hours on an edit. Yeah. I can stand on yeah. set for 20 yeah. hours all day and, yeah. and problem solve. I can, you know, read camera manuals and be enthralled forever. But anything else, I couldn't couldn't do it. Is there a book or commencement speech or some hmm. kind, some piece of information that you that you wish that you found sooner? Ira Glass and yes. this American Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like your your art or your ability catching up yes. to your oh god, it's that your taste and your abilities. There's a there's a gap. I think he talks about and just how to push through yes. it yep. and just keep yep. making stuff and eventually you'll be if you want to be an author. Yeah, the first thing's not going to be good. The second yeah. thing's not going to be good. Just keep, yeah, yeah. keep going. Uh, and somebody's done a brilliant job on YouTube of sort of turning it into almost like like the equivalent of like a lyric video where everything's yeah, being yeah, written yeah, yeah. out. Yeah, that that was mind-blowing. The book the book that I read was um, not The Art of War, The War, War of, of Art. Art. Yeah, another, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah, yeah. So I'm sitting on the beach and I, a friend had recommended the book and I'm having one of those real like looking up from the book like this was written about me yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody's yeah, yeah. following yeah. me the resistance yeah, yeah that, that everything of you not getting up and going to the gym or you not getting yes. up and writing or editing yeah. like and how to beat the resistance yeah. and it was just framed in such a way that like you you know all this stuff yes. and you know it all yes. about yourself but i just thought it was a, a sort of a stroke of genius the way he put it yeah. together and then every artist that I talk to that's read it goes, yeah. me too. Yeah. Like So yeah. he found all the common underlying psychology yeah. of it. And then the other one that really did it for me was uh, how, to, how to make a movie for under $10,000 and not go to jail. It's just, all right, I made a movie, you know, this tiny little movie. I'm going to give you, here's, here's my mom's recipe for chili because this will feed your crew for $18 wow. instead of buying everyone <laughs> Subway at $10 a sub or yeah, $5 yeah. a sub. And, and here's how to get around having permits. And yeah, make sure yeah. you always have a student on set because if the if the police come by, you can say, it's just a student film, yeah, right, yeah. Jimmy? You yeah. know? Is there a time when you realize you're really afraid to do something, but after the fact, you didn't have to be? Okay. The first time I, I got a gig in L.A., first time I'd ever been in L.A., um, I was working with the artist Vanessa Carlton. I was hired to shoot like the making of her album, a, D a DVD that was going to come out. Like huge opportunity. I'm on the plane. I'm going to LA for the first time. I'm looking at the Hollywood sign in the distance as the plane is landing. I get in the taxi. I'm like, yeah, this is it. And then we hit traffic. I'm like, oh, how long to the hotel? It's like, uh, about an hour. And then I'm just sitting there looking around. I'm seeing like, um, the Capitol Records building off the side of the 101. And I'm, I'm going, I don't know anyone here. I don't know how to be a professional documentary maker. Why am I here? What am I doing? Like they're gonna figure figure out what a fraud I am immediately. I can't compete with everybody else that's moved here and lives here. I remember distinctly some people came in from MTV on day one to, to do an interview and they didn't know how to work their camera correctly. They couldn't white balance the camera they had. I was like, do you mind if I you know, I said, actually, you got the shadow on our face. Like, if you just, like, turned it this way a little bit and put a bounce, you know. And they are just kind of like, oh, would you, would you mind helping in camera operating? And then mm -hmm. she's like, you know, we're always looking for camera people at MTV. Like, I could put you in touch with my boss. And I was just like, I belong here. I can, I can do it, this. You know? it, Not that I did anything wonderful or fantastic. I just, you know, did the white balance correctly and, and made a lighting suggestion. But it was, it was reassurance that if... If people that didn't know how to do it were employed, yes. that I might yes. stand. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. at least have a fighting chance, yeah. you know. Yeah. When is the last time you cried tears of joy? Oh wow. The tears didn't actually leave my yes. eyes. <laughs> that still counts. You know, our movie The Scare House was released yeah. and in Canada it was a company called D Films and so you know the movie opens with the D Films logo, um, and then two production companies that I'm owners of the mm -hmm. logos come up and that's proud and then the movie started. That's the way I saw it at our world premiere. That's the way I saw it the first time that it was on TV. I went and bought my own Blu-ray at Walmart and popped mm -hmm. it in. Like, just to have those experiences, mm -hmm. you know. A year later, it came out on Amazon in the U.S. And not even thinking, I just went to go show it to somebody in my apartment. And, you know, I'm standing in front of my TV. I'm putting the remote on. It was on a buy it on Amazon. Hit play. And the Universal Studios logo starts up. Like, mm -hmm. the famous one with, like, the globe and the, the letters spinning around it. And, like, my knees almost gave out. I was like, I... I knew, I, I knew the whole time that Universal Studios was putting out in the U.S. I just hadn't seen that iconic logo yeah, and yeah. theme music, dun, 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 yeah. drum, drum, with the drums, and 
I'm like, that's what was in front of E.T. when I was yeah. a kid. That's what was in front of Jaws and, and uh, Jurassic Park and all these iconic, like, sp- all the Spielberg movies that I saw growing up. And, like, that was a real, like, I, I got all, all yeah, teary-eyed. Yeah. I was like, my leg, I just had to sit down, like, and it, and then and then my logo was come up right right yeah. after it. And that, that was a big, there's nobody on the planet that's a filmmaker that can't tell you if they made, like, their first studio film or film that was picked up by one of their favorite yeah. companies that, like, seeing that logo was, isn't... A huge moment for them, you know. I want to talk about what you're working on now. Can you talk about the pizza thing? If not, I can cut that out. Um, I can I can say it in the briefest terms. Okay. I am working on a documentary about pizza. Cool. Arguably, some of the best pizza on the planet. Yeah. And I'll leave it at that. Okay. For now. And then I have a, a film that I'm working on uh, with a very good friend of mine in Los Angeles named David Wilkins. David brought this idea to the table. It's now called Last Call. We've been outlining it and writing it together. We're going to shoot it very soon here in in Windsor. Mm-hmm. Um, got the financing together. David's going to star in it. I just finished all post-production on a short film that I directed called Are You My Mommy? And for someone who's watching who's, who's maybe not familiar with your work, if they wanted to, what are maybe two? Would it be Scarehouse and maybe a couple others that they should check out to get yeah, a taste? Yeah, the best thing to do is GavinMichaelBooth.com. It's just my full name at Instagram cool. is at GavinMichaelBooth. I think Twitter's just at Gavin Booth. Facebook's cool. easy to find cool. me. Especially anybody out there that's watching that's uh, an artist and wants to make stuff. I'm here. I want to make stuff too. Message yeah. anytime. Yeah. Uh, is there any kind of final piece of advice or parting message that you'd want to share with people watching? Listen to the advice that you get. Huh. And if the advice sounds crazy, it's probably the best advice. I'm starting a podcast yeah. of my oh, cool. own called Here's My Advice, Not That You'll Take It. When I was 18 or 19, I would reach out to people for advice. And I can think of a few things where I went... That's crazy. I know I can do it faster and mm-hmm. cheaper and better than that. Cut to two years later where I'm like, shit. Should have taken it, yeah. <laughs> I should have just listened to that advice and saved myself two yeah. years. You are disbelieving most of the time because you don't want to accept that it's going to be that difficult yes. or yeah, take yeah, yeah, that yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You just, you want the shortcut and the shortcuts rarely exist. Just be prepared to do the work and listen to that advice. Cool, yeah. cool. Well, listen, man. The two main reasons I, I wanted to talk to you are, one, you're a doer, and two, you're not particularly interested in doing things in a conventional way. Usually not. So, <laughs> in, gen- in general. Mostly out of necessity. Yeah, Mostly yeah. Out, out of lack but, of budget uh, and necessity. But yeah. I, I just want to say thanks for thanks for, for your time. Well, at the time of recording, this is only like one of these out, so yeah, yeah. I appreciate your time. Um, well, I love it. I, I yeah, love the whole thanks. podcast well, we'll drive community. back to your place. And I think anybody that's, that's in the arts and willing to sort of share what they're learning is one of the best things. I, I listen to podcasts yeah. all the time. Every day, I walk my dog four times a day. It's about an hour and a half of walking every day, and I've, it's always a podcast yeah. on. Yeah. You know, it's one of the best ways to learn, man. The yeah. idea that artists that are willing to share what they know—that's that's the best. The people that want to just hoard everything, like, yeah. oh, come on, man, the whole internet, everything's open source now. Mm-hmm. Artists should be just as open yeah. source. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. You you gain nothing by like keeping your secrets to so yourself. True. You know, so true. So yeah. true. Cool. Until next time. Let's go drive. (laughs) Thanks for watching. If you have a favorite part of the video, I'd be curious to see a timestamp below of what that part is. If something stood out to you or there was an aha moment, please like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Do you shock people? Uh, I mean, I don't think I wow anybody, but I mean, I just shock them that I can play. At all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's always nice.